Okay. All right. So I just really wanted to get some like stories from you guys because you know Jamal Edwards was a pioneer um, in representing and documenting Black British culture in a digital space. And I wanted to know like what was the first time you guys realized how special he was, like how monumental he was to our culture as well. I just share a few stories with the people. Um, I'll go with Uncle Marvin. First. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a real raw one for me. Uh, so Jamal, I, I met Jamal shortly after F sixty four took off. He, I invited him to Sunday show at the time. So this is uh, two, uh, I can't remember what year this is now, but two thousand and seven eight maybe. And I invited him to Sunday show, and I remember. I, me and me and Napa who used to do Sunday show together, we, we would walk around a bit and he was just outside in this really long queue. So the queue was absurd. And he was just standing there waiting for hopefully someone to come out and go and get him. Um, and I was just like, that's such a humble thing to do anyway, because I, I wouldn't do that. I'd be like, hi, you invited me and told me to come and you told me to come straight to the front. Um, and he was just standing in, in the middle of the queue waiting to, to be let him by himself. Um, and then when we met, you know, my thing was just I wanted to meet everybody and introduce them to all the people. And so he, he really honoured those relationships, but also he made it a reoccurring place to come. Um, and shortly afterwards, uh, I started helping him with SBTV. Um, uh, I think it might have been around 2009. And, and at that time, it was just trying to get interview, bigger interviews on, on the platform. So it was me... Uh, Twin B, uh, my friend Richard Antwi, who's no longer with us also. And we all were just like getting behind him. There was quite a lot of people doing it, but we we came together and was like, how do we help this? How do we, you know, help him grow what he's doing? We helped him build his team. We found Georgia Lewis Anderson, who was the presenter. Um, and she actually texted me and I, I it, it was tough because I, um, uh, yeah, that was really hard to hear from her. Because I remember the moment that we went to Cricklewood to meet her and do the interview. And then when she did it, we were like, she's the one. And he had this thing of like his eyes would like 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 brighten when he when something really funny or interesting happened. And it just made me think about those those moments. Um and so yeah, it's been a really, really tough time. And there's so many good stories. Like another one is just when I remember he came to Sunday show and everyone would descend on him with their like, I can rap. And he would have to sit, stand there and talk to people for ages uh, with lots of passion. Everyone knows how, if anyone ever used to buy CDs outside Foot Locker, you would know the passion that yes. an, an aspiring MC has. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy just talking his, his, his ears off. And then again, Jamal's looking at me like, bro, you just left me. Don't, don't leave me here <laughs> with these people. But still being really polite and nice. And, and so many people connected to him in that moment. Um, but I have stories of like him and Ed Sheeran coming to watch Arsenal versus Man United at my house. Like, it's a, uh, it's, 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 um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very real one. Like at a very particular point, there weren't many outlets. It was like him, one extra, GRM. You know, Sunday show was around. There was a couple of places you could go to do stuff, and he was, was by far my favorite. And he was a great guy. And I don't want to dishonor anybody else but there was a we had a very special moment where we we coexisted and I was so honored to be a part of it and the legacy is out of this world but there's you know he's just one of those people that it, it, you never want to hear that news from yeah yeah um Auntie Farah I don't know him so I can't I don't have personal stories in that respect the only thing that I can say is that what I have noticed is that not one person has said a bad thing about him. And I think that just speaks volumes of the type of character that he was. Everyone's got really good stories about him and just saying that, you know, how, um, how, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How generous he was with his time and with his talent and with his, uh, you know, his heart even. So I just think this has affected, I mean, my, my entire timeline yesterday was full of stories about him about and people and all these people well, I won't say all, the majority of these people had personal stories about him. And then there were also people who said that they'd been influenced by him and they'd, you know, he'd encourage them. You know, he's a West London boy, so I've got to support that. Love the fact that he went to the West London colleges and, you know, always went back and talked about it. So I, I just mm -hmm. admire what he done, what he did in his short space of time. And, it, you know, it just goes to show you that if you work hard and you truly believe 
and you're, you've just got a clean heart as well, you can achieve great things. And I just think, you know, he was part of the Prince's Trust. It's just amazing what he achieved in the short space of time. And I know that he'll truly be missed, but I think that his legacy will live on forever, which to me is a beautiful thing. There's a quote that he said, um, it's not, you know, no one expects to live forever, but it's about what you can do. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But um, yeah, I just think he just seems like a genuine, genuinely beautiful soul. And, you know, heaven definitely gained another angel. So that's what I'm going to say about. Thank you. I'm sure they... <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, this one is a hard one. I can't lie. And I, I can't, I can't even say like, you know, like bona fide brethren's or anything like that. It's, it's not even that. It's just that um, kind of what, I guess it's like what he stood for in a sense of like, well, to me anyway, just like, he was just a down to earth, cool guy. Like, despite what he's achieved, his stature, his accolades, everything, like he was just a down to earth person. So it like, it didn't matter where kind of like I saw him, it was, do you know what I mean? He was just always just nice, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yes. And like a lot of people, as we we all touch the industry, um, they're not like that, you know? Like they really, it's, and I hate to say it, but like a lot of black people, it does, do you know what I mean? That's our space as well, do you know what I mean? Because that's what we come across and stuff. But like, sometimes it's like, you know, they go clear and it's like, you can't chat to them again or, or they have to, you have to be standing in the lights for them to notice you or that sort of thing. And he just wasn't like that. It just, you know, like, I don't even want to, I don't, I, don't, I feel like well, stories are like trivial and stuff, but like, I do remember, you know, I've worked in events for a very long time and at the beginning, the beginning of my kind of like events in tech career, um, he used to do a couple of events with YouTube and stuff and like, you know, he'll be on panel and maybe a bit nervous and stuff, do you know what I mean? So like, we'll do a bit of a rehearsal and talk him through it, like what points he should, you know, stick to and stuff and things like that. And he's just like really just gracious and just, you know, just not, full of himself you know mm. and he's always been like a like an example especially the younger people in my world like okay like well look at this guy he's doing this like you don't have to be like a, a bad man <laughs> like or whatever it is to, to 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 be in that space right do you know what I mean you don't have to be you can just be cool and still play in that space like and, and just be authentic and you know I feel like his mum as well, Brenda, on the occasions that, you know, we've crossed paths in, in work and stuff. It's just that like, she's just lovely. Like she's, he was a testament to her, like, mm. like com completely. And it's just, you know, when you just see someone who's got good home training, do you know what I mean? It just like, as a, as a you know, like a mature person in this world, like it just makes you smile, you know? Cause it's, it just shows the, um, the possibility. And he certainly showed that. And I just, yeah, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, and like, I, I know this is not really conventional, but it kind of just makes me angry that there are there are people that shouldn't maybe not be here yeah. that are still here and, and and he's not here. Like, what? how is that fair? It's not fair. Uh, that's honestly, yeah, yeah, it's just... It's just a difficult one. So I think like, and I will say this as well, like I know we get lots of different types of viewers and I think like, especially like a lot of young people now at work and stuff, you need to give them space. You need to give them time. They need to process. Do you know what I mean? Like this is someone that's a pillar in our community and they need to, because a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of black people are just like, their, their white colleagues aren't necessarily feeling this. Do you know what I mean? And it's really tough. So I, I feel I feel for them. Reach out to them, see if they're okay. Yeah. Auntie Nana? Um, so what I was uh, comes to mind is the first time I really noticed him was from the Chrome advert. And I was really inspired by seeing that. Like just like, wow, there's somebody like that, you know, he got a camcorder and just kind of went out there and has created this channel. And I wasn't really on YouTube properly then, like be what was I like 30? So maybe slightly slow on the internet uptake. 
So I just I remember going on and like really being glued to that season of of um, adverts that Chrome was doing, but just followed him. And actually, SBTV really introduced me to Grime. And I still love Grime to this day. But it was from watching videos coming up on his channel. And I was like, this is great. Like, there's a whole new youth subculture that I wasn't really aware of. Again, at the same time, like what Marvin was saying, lots of the clubs had closed down and we were doing events in the city. And because of the um, 696 forms, which basically were just cutting Black people out of having anything on in a venue, it's like he actually created a space where people could show their talents because you couldn't do it live too often and just having that digital space take off I was like that's just amazing and reading through all of the testimonials and people kind of like pouring their hearts out while they're grieving I was thinking of his mother just like I'd be so so proud obviously you're grieving the loss of your your son but at the same time, the 31 years that he was on this earth, what he managed to achieve, the millions of people that he touched in various different ways, I'd just be, my heart would be soaring that he he had done this, like my little kid had managed to grow into the man that he did. So, yeah, I, I was just, it was, it was shocking on Sunday. I really was like, wow, he's so young, but achieved so much. And who knows what this life is for? And just the outpouring of love that he's received. I really think they go hand in hand to where you land in the outer realms. Like, I think that outpouring takes you somewhere else. Just looking up into the sky and just thinking, wow, he probably has a whole galaxy that has been made for him now. Um, yeah, I can't, yeah, most everything that you guys are saying. I think my personal memories of just, again, not like a best friend or anything, not at all. But just, it's interesting, I'm definitely a decade or so older than him um, and decade and change. And just having it, like, him validating, like, like yeah, I see what you're doing, this, yeah, rich practice, I know it. I think I must, I always do this thing where, I don't know if you know who I am, if I'm being introduced or something like that, or I don't know if you remember me. And he was like, no, I know what you're doing, I see what you're doing. Just that validation from someone who's done a platform similar to mine in a different space, obviously more music focused. It was always a... Um, the healthy competition, inspiration, looking to what he's doing and inspiring me to do stuff with the British Blacklist. And I, I remember one time he was on the tube with a friend. Um, I didn't want it because I was a little ways. Like I said, I was like, oh, there's Jamal. And he had um, the, these, I think, black Nike 95s. They were all black. And I was like, nah, they're bad. And I was just <laughs> little things like that. I was like, oh, they're bad. I'm going to get a pair. I never did get the pair. But I was always like, yeah, I saw them on Jamal and they look excellent. Just silly, just little silly things. And every time I think I saw him not long ago, at one of the Soho's and just, you know, always saying hello. And that was it. Mm. It's just, um, yeah, as you guys have all said, a beautiful, wonderful soul, humble soul from up the road as well. It's just like, yeah, amazing. And the work, I think there, we had an email conversation about the stuff that he was doing in Acton, which is local to my area. And, you know, whenever that would have picked off, maybe that we'd have done something, I don't know. Um, and I just wanted to, like as I, I was saying to the guys beforehand, that I actually sent a DM to his mum because... There was, you know, I think Charlene White announced on what's... I was just about to say that, yeah. On um, Loose Women saying, you know, that Brenda was robbed of her moment to announce to the world that her son had passed. And I definitely, I DM'd Brenda this morning. Like, she doesn't know me from Adam, but I did apologise in any way that if my our post on the British Blacklist was anyhow insensitive or caused her any pain. Um, it wasn't. And I genuinely, I was, I was selfishly thinking of myself. And I did, we posted, my sister and I discussed it late in the evening at the end of the day after I'd heard about it. And then I actually did say to her, let's put it out tomorrow. But then she was like, I'm, I'm ready to do it now. And I said, okay, cool. It was um, very, very late, but that doesn't excuse. And Brenda has a right to be, feel To happy. be fair to you, to be to be fair to you, based on what Charlene said during yesterday's show, it, it was more of people in this, in like that knew immediately posted. So yeah. it's not so much, I think then the media obviously jumped on it and it, they, she specifically said as well, social media. So to be fair to you, I think by the time I even saw it on your platform, I'd seen it on other people's platforms. So yeah, it's just, I was going to touch on that. Unfortunately, she didn't have the opportunity to do it in the way that she wanted to do it. And, you know, my thoughts are with her as well. Yeah, I, I think, no, I think there's a bit, there's a real big problem with, um, social media and these types of events and in one way you want to honor people but also jumping in ahead of the family is a real 
problem. I've I've made that mistake as well, just been invited to do something and I'm like, oh yeah, cool, thinking I'm helping, finding out that I'm making it more difficult. And it, it is really horrific to hold that space. And in many ways, um, the, 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 it's a conversation we just need to have because in the moment, like some people are sharing screenshots of their private conversations. And to me, that feels like a violation of it being a private conversation. Um, but everyone agrees differently. But I do think, you know, we need some sort of protocol because I think it just becomes, I know, I know Kobe Bryant, um, his family had some challenges around that. Like people were talking about it and taking pictures and doing mad things. And I think people just think about the engagement um, mm. and the moment. And, uh, and before they think about the family, like people aren't real people anymore. They're, they're a context to have a conversation or to show how much you knew them. Or like I posted and I think I had about 20 comments. I just deleted it because I was like, I don't actually want, I don't want the energy on my page. I don't even want like, I don't, I don't know. It just didn't feel the right way to honor in that time. So, you know, but everyone has their things in their own sensitivities, but I've become extra sensitive to it. Um, and I think it's something that I just want to keep personal now, but I know people mourn in different ways, but it, it's a very valid conversation. I think, yeah, I agree. I think because um, of the process is like, I have a platform that speaks about people in the arts. We definitely report when people have passed. And in my moments, like, it's because I, I remove, we always have hashtags. We always do things like that. But I, rem I when it's, when someone passes, and if, they, if we do, if there are any posts of a hashtag, that's an error. But when someone passes, we remove anything that make that, will look like we're trying to capitalize on someone's passing so like no hashtag so it's not like we want to be searched for or found and even and similarly we had loads of comments on the post and then the like count was going up and I was like I don't want anyone to ever think that this post is capitalizing on this thing it's a genuine we've heard this news we want to put it out there on a platform in a respect as respectful way the only thing I did wrong was not I didn't I didn't even think I actually didn't even I forgot that Brenda would even be on its socials so I didn't even think to check on whether she'd even spoken about it. I did act on the fact that everyone was talking about it. And so I did, which was wrong. But um, because, you know, I worked at the BBC for how many years and we have protocol when something happens, we have to follow a protocol, a strict protocol, especially with the, like the leaders, the queen, the royal family. There's a strict order of procedure before we can even report, before things yeah. go out. So we'd get in super trouble if, if I was at the BBC and I found out the queen had passed and I put it on social media. So I think it's a sackable offense, to be honest, before we follow proper protocol so I mean it's hard because everyone's a journalist but yeah it's yeah, I mean like as you all know they make loose women where I currently work and um you know there there's things that we have to be quite careful of as well in terms of how these things are handled and certainly when it's someone who is a staff member so uh, but I do I do think it's hard but just I suppose what it is as well if you think about someone when you're grieving yourself the process of telling people is that mm. it, it's extremely difficult and yeah it also really brings things um to the surface once you've got to start telling people it sets a whole nother ball rolling and that's quite difficult and she you know she may not have been ready to say anything yet and you know when when people say respect our privacy because we're grieving that's because they don't want to have to deal with that. So when you're grieving, you don't want to have to deal with the outside world. The last thing you want to do as well is continuously talk about how. Yeah. And that's yeah. Something I, I, honestly, when, whenever there's a crisis here, it's the peopling that makes it worse. It, yeah. it just always is, man. Like, I think about every tough time I've had in the last five years. It's never what's going on with the actual moment. It's, the, it's how people start responding. And they create more things for you to deal with and have to process. They have questions. They have things they need. They offering help like it's so difficult to even when people say like oh how can i help i actually have to think how i don't know how can you help bring me a pie tell me you love me leave me alone leave like, me alone i, just, I was gonna say that yeah, literally it's a, leave me alone it's, 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 it's a very difficult space to hold people are not really well versed on um how to not it's center cold. themselves in grieving it's just like it, it becomes your performance exactly. like you know going on and, and and I think there's one thing honoring and celebrating when you have a platform it's one thing your personal testimony is another but you know I'm, I may actually do something for beloved because I just it, it, it occurs so often and it depends on your proximity you know if you're miles away and no one has any idea you exist it's one thing 
But if you have a platform as another thing, if you're a person of note, it's another thing. It's all slightly yeah. different ways of of handling it because you know as British Blacklist you have a right to report it TMZ report things when people are still you know on on their last legs they'll report it yeah. they don't they don't care and then you know if that's your role in society is to inform people if you don't know them it's one thing if you do know them it's another thing so but I, I for me personally I I you know I have you have to handle those things a lot more carefully and it's just it, it takes sometimes it takes a moment for it to be like oh actually this isn't right. It's very difficult to do it in advance because so much happens which we're desensitized to. Yeah. People just like blitz through. So I, I don't I don't want to have judgment, but I do want to have a conversation about where, what we can be doing going forward to not let that happen again because we've lost a lot of prominent people in the last two years. I think yeah. it's um I do think it's like super difficult. And why like obviously like with every kind of sensitivity I just think like it's it's just so hard like people want to express how they feel and love and do you know what I mean and social media just so happens to be the platform and like it might not show up how and because also as well like algorithms are a thing do you know what I mean like it's, it's not it's, it's very difficult to translate the intention behind someone posting do you know what I mean? Like, and it's, and you know, there's, I feel like sometimes there's an expectation for like, there's a perfect way to handle things. And like, if you're finding out something out of the blue that you, do you know what I mean? It was, it was a shock. It was an absolute shock to everybody, you know? So like, I'm not surprised you got people, you know, on Twitter, like trying to find out if it's true. I'm not surprised that people trying yeah. to hunt down the truth and stuff like that at all, because it just wasn't, expected and like maybe because we know you know his mum and stuff and everything like that but if we didn't do you know what I mean like he he's a notable person right there's an interest in him he's affected so many people like it's it's just I just don't know if there's there's one necessary right way or for like how people need to uh, can show up to express how they feel. I think they should obviously try and be mindful, um, but I think the majority of people do not have ill intent. Do you know what I mean? No, and I, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's ill intent, but I think we we talk about what our our what we were trying to do versus what actually happened, and so this is what I'm saying: is it we can we can have wide berth for. Accountability. Happened, I think right? I think we've just disconnected from humanity in a way where we we disconnect from the human impact and what that could mean and what we create for others with with our discourse. And we talk about this in terms of like race. We talk about it in terms of gender. Events happen. Sarah Everard happens, and your jokes don't land anymore. Your commentary no longer lands because the context is extreme, violent, and it's urgent. Post George Floyd. I don't even want to hear the N-word in any context. So there's a sensitivity that's created in real time. And what I'm saying is I think, the because I'm not even talking about, because I think what you're talking about is like six, seven hours after post three hours of people talking about it. I'm talking about the first group of people who are just like tweeting, tweeting, tweeting. And the first verified type people I'm seeing announcing, they then create the formal narrative and, and no one actually knows because yeah, no one was invited it. into the space to know, to have a view on what it is. I'm, not, I'm not actually, sorry, I know you're trying to qualify what I'm saying, but that's not what I'm, I'm talking about even from the beginning. Do you know what I mean? Because also as well, one thing that, that sometimes happens is like if someone's asking a question about something on Twitter, they don't necessarily know that the first person asking the question. Do you know what I mean? It might seem like it and they might be the source of it, but at that moment they might not know. And so I don't think that all of these things are necessarily like contrived in that way or people are just trying to get likes or or just trying to create content in that kind of traditional way. I think that people are just curious and like maybe, you know, it's it's just their platform and, and their mode of communication and I think it need, there needs to come to a point where we you know almost like accept that that is what it is do you know what I mean and navigate through those eyes rather than trying to make the 
the people the enemy because it's just an expression of love really and truly when people are posting their experiences when they're writing comments or when they're liking posts when they see Jamal it's just an expression of love it's like I understand you I see your pain you are me I'm you that's all that is so I, just... I think that you're both right because I think that one of the things that no one can tell you is what the measure for grief is Grief yeah. is displayed in, in many different ways. I'm sitting here now. doesn't mean I'm all right. Do you know what I mean? Grief can be displayed in, in many, many different ways. And I do think you're right, Auntie Sade, that when some, certainly when you see someone going through the same thing as you, it can be helpful because you, you resonate with that. But at the same time, I do think, as Marvin said, that some platforms have a responsibility to make sure that their sources are correct and they're not just putting things out just for the sake of it and I mean like like if you someone mentioned TMZ they they just put things out how many times do we see mm. things where it says that someone's died and the person's like alive and kicking so I think yeah. that people have a, a right to at least before they print something or put it on social media or whatever the case may be to maybe reach out to that person's family and allow them to say what they need to say first of all you cannot stop if there are friends you cannot stop if there are, um, you know, friends that are close to him that put it out there. Because, again, that goes back to that's how they're displaying grief. And you would hope that those people touch base with the family, first of all. But in terms of actual platforms, I would like to think that that is handled a bit better. It, if we can go back to 1997 and people taking pictures of Diana in the tunnel. So I just feel like that kind of thing, it, you, you have a responsibility to manage these things better. And on that note, just sending love and condolences to... Um, Jamal's family and friends, loved ones. Um, can we get the comments, please? I think it's you, Auntie Nana, this week. Yes. Okay. All right. So, hello to everybody. Neil Dante, um, Antoinette, and Iola. And um, Iola says, loving the memories of honouring of Jamal. So true, Auntie Shade. I agree with every word said, especially how unfair it is that the good ones go too soon. And whilst there are still so many undesirables around, and thank you, Jamal, for living your truth and walking your talk. Uh, Candy says, I see a trend of people hashtag hashtagging the deceased um, and the bereaved, forgetting that the family are going to be bombarded with pings and messages when they're still trying to process it. Yeah, very true. All righty. Okay, so we've got a bunch of 